We reached 3,000 subs, guys! I tell you, this thing was worth every penny. 2002 was a pretty good year for Disney Interactive. Sure, they had their usual mediocre movie games. And, um, less than mediocre games. But some of those released were of a surprisingly high quality. And in one case in particular, that's a major understatement. That's the power of the Keyblade! With their collaboration with Squaresoft, Disney games attained an unprecedented high note. I am, of course, speaking of the universally acclaimed Kingdom Hearts, heralded as one of the greatest video games of all time, and undoubtedly the quintessential Disney video game experience. And I thought what better way to celebrate this 3K milestone than by reviewing something much worse. Yes, today we're once again paying a visit to our troublemaking extraterrestrial experiment, Stitch. Or 626, as he should probably be called. Ooh, you see, while the PS1 game loosely follows the plot of the movie, this PS2 game is more so inspired by the events of the movie's cold opening, which sees a renegade 626 break free from captivity and wreak havoc. All while being pursued by the guards under the command of the fearsome captain. Um. Oh, what's his name again? Um. <gasps> Gesundheit. Now, immediately from the outset, it's plainly obvious that this release represents a much more ambitious venture for our little blue alien friend. <laughs> While the PS1 game boils down to little else besides a generic Crash Bandicoot copy, this game definitely has more going for it. It's frenetic and fast-paced, and the combat is much more interesting. <laughs> But, as is the case with many movie tie-ins, the game also has some major setbacks. The question is, is this experiment doomed to failure? Let's find out. First, what about the story? Well, it's pretty thin at best. My efforts to prove myself greatest genetic scientist through experiments such as 6 to 1 have met with little success. Jumba is on a mission to prove himself a great scientist with his creations. Experiment 6 to 1 was apparently an unmitigated disaster, but he has high hopes for his latest creation, the eponymous 626. <laughs> I'm not sure what is especially wrong with 621, but his rejection essentially blossoms into a villain origin story, as he subsequently develops a vengeful streak and has his heart set on sabotaging Stitch. <laughs> really though, can you blame him? Honestly, I really don't get why this guy is perceived to be so inferior to 626. For one thing, he's capable of speaking English fluently. Who's superior now? I mean, it's quite the miraculous coincidence that the aliens can speak English at all, but that's another matter entirely. If anything, 622 one is more advanced than Stitch, and there's no reason provided for his maltreatment. His backstory actually makes him an ironically likeable character. Hell, this guy should be the hero of the game. No wonder he's pissed off. Considering everything, I'd say his behavior is pretty justified. I'm room for you, buddy. Kill them all. At last. Enough DNA to power my new teleportation device. As Stitch, you need to use the teleporter to journey through four worlds, collecting DNA samples for Jumba. Oh, we can go to new worlds. We can gather different DNA samples, and I can create new genetic experiments. Curb. Sorry, what was that? Curb. Ah. Yes, I thought that's what you said. The more DNA samples you find, the more worlds you unlock. No. Pick an area and start collecting DNA. The first world sees you explore a jungle for DNA before returning what you've found to Jumba. Here we find these cute but creepy creatures called Dreamers jabbering away. <laughs> I don't know what they are, but they seem happy. Although they seem to be partaking in some kind of weird ass cult. I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but anyway. The jungle setting allows you to get to grips with Stitch's climbing ability. Though maneuvering across these narrow platforms is quite the chore with this abysmal camera. The right analog stick pushes the camera way too far, and letting go of it immediately makes the camera snap back behind Stitch. It's just so awkward. Should you have any issues turning the camera, and believe me you will, you are able to hold the L2 button to automatically swing the camera behind Stitch. And you'll probably find you're having to do this a lot. Honestly, the moves themselves aren't too bad, but the camera can often make the gameplay intolerable and tedious. I honestly think it's possibly one of the worst cameras I've encountered. The rest of the game follows the same basic formula. You visit a world, collect as many DNA samples as you can, and return. 
That about it. I think you mean level completed, not level collected. Really? Who proofread this? The game can get very repetitive, but you do earn some more equipment and abilities throughout. <laughs> Stitch's main weapon is his guns. And occasionally enemies will leave behind their guns after having been defeated. Collecting them increases the rapidity of your shots, meaning that at full capacity, you can simply hold the square button and fire continuously. In addition, you may also occasionally find other guns to aid you on your adventure, including freeze guns that enable you to freeze enemies into ice statues, and missile guns that can inflict more damage. There's also a really weird move called Burst Mode that allows Stitch to scurry back and forth and side to side really fast, creating the illusion that you've slowed down time. Honestly though, I didn't really see the point in this considering you can easily pass through all the levels just by blindly shooting at everything in sight. Ooh, that thing is a killing machine! I rather think we have the upper hand here. There's also a strafe move, which I don't think is overly necessary when it's easy enough to shoot everything without this feature. That said, it's an improvement on Aladar's strafe move. Really? What the hell was that? I also will admit that it does make aiming the guns a lot easier. Shooting at enemies while moving Stitch around is awkward as hell, as the terrible camera makes aiming your gun a frankly horrible experience. It's extremely difficult to get Stitch to face the way you want him to. What's more, if you're anywhere near any of the objects you destroy, you'll receive damage. Since the entire game basically revolves around your wreaking havoc and destroying everything, this seems like a poor choice to me. It's realistic, yes, but as you can see, maneuvering Stitch is such a spectacular pain in the ass that these explosions are hard to avoid. It's simply not worth it much of the time. Stitch can also pick up and throw objects, but honestly, with so many guns under your belt, why bother? Methinks we're a little overpowered. So anyway, before too long, Experiment 621 steals the grapple gun, allowing him to... Uh, swing on things. Um, how devious. So with 621 on the loose, we have our villain of the story, and... Oh wait, what? Who's this guy? So, Chumba has arrived. Excellent. All is going according to plan. What? Who the hell are you? Really, this guy comes right the hell out of nowhere and has little, if anything, to do with the main plot. In fact, it was only when writing the script for this thing that I was reminded that this guy existed. Which is a shame, as he's got a solid evil laugh. <laughs> I mean, he sounds a bit like a chipmunk, but it's all right. All the same, he's nowhere near as good as- <laughs> Okay, so this guy's name is Dr. Habitrail. I don't actually recall him being referred to by name in the game itself, but either way, I personally don't think this name suits him. He's just too darn adorable. <laughs> I think I'll call him Nibbles. I'll be honest, I'm a little lost as to what this guy's intentions are. I get the impression he's meant to be some kind of rival mad scientist, and he seems to be turning the little cute alien dudes into, uh, big ugly alien dudes. But I don't really understand what he has to gain from all this. Uh, really, what's the goal here? Anyway, large enemies can only be taken out with a ball slam attack. Which would be fine if the camera didn't bizarrely jump behind Stitch every time the ball slam button is pressed. Really, it took me quite a while to get used to it. It's very odd. Hmm, who's that poking around my cliffs? I did no such thing, you pervert! Before long, we retrieve the grapple gun ourselves, which allows you to cling to horizontal bars and swing using the R1 button. It's initially fairly awkward to use, but you grow accustomed to it pretty quickly. However, it's strange to me that you don't get to keep this gun, or indeed any upgrade you find. It feels as though it should be a permanent upgrade, but in every level you need to use the grapple, you have to find the gun again. Ah! You found the grapple gun! Use it to swing your way around the world! It's not hard to find, it just seems a little odd to me that you don't simply keep it. And as an additional annoyance, every time you retrieve it, Jumba delivers the exact same line of dialogue every single time. Ah! You found the grapple gun! And yes, he sounds just as surprised the tenth time you retrieve it as he did the first time. Ah! You found the grapple gun! Ah! You found the grapple gun! Ah! You found the grapple gun! Yes, it's the bloody grapple gun! I know! It's also really convenient that these things are just lying around whenever I need them. Regardless, the grapple works well enough. 
The biggest annoyance is, as usual, the camera. Stitch's moves often require you to have a good look around, either to get your bearings or to see where the encroaching enemies are. And it simply denies you that ability. <laughs> You know what, as this is a special occasion, how about we take a shot whenever I mention the camera? I get the feeling it's gonna come up a lot! <laughs> and I also have these sombrero shot glasses for just such an occasion. <laughs> Aren't they cute? <laughs> With all the swinging, wall crawling and badass rock music, this game unexpectedly gave me major PS1 Spider-Man vibes. Obviously, it's nowhere near as high quality as those games, but I appreciate what they were going for here. Heck, there's even a gold armor you can find and wear that's kind of reminiscent of the Spidey armor. <laughs> Ah, the old trusty Spidey armor. As with a vast multitude of other movie games, I get the distinct impression this was a rushed affair. And it's an incredible shame as there's some real potential here. <laughs> Throughout the game, you also find these flying squids. When you touch one, it flies away to another location, the objective being to reach it before it disappears. If you manage to follow it to its final location, you're rewarded with a film reel. Collecting film reels allows you to purchase movie clips in the secrets menu. Now, many of you will know, I am normally something of a completionist when it comes to recording these games. I do usually like to complete the game in its entirety and find out if there's any reward for 100% completion. If we're being honest though, in this case... I could not be asked. Honesty is the best policy, guys. See, these things are often frustratingly difficult to track down. And once again, it's not really the fault of the controls themselves, but the awkward camera. <laughs> oh, that's vile. Oh. Oh. Ah, this was a mistake. It simply doesn't allow you to get your bearings and actually see where the things fly off to. I wound up finding a fair amount of these squids, but really couldn't muster the energy to hunt all of them down. Especially when your reward boils down to nothing but low-res movie clips. Wow. Again, guys, just buy the DVD. It's a better use of your time. Oh, God, that's vile. Before long, we finally encounter Nibbles. You should not have interfered with my plans. What plans? I still don't know who you are! And this fight is extremely underwhelming. Nibbles controls this giant robot, and sure, it looks impressive, but for some reason, despite having four limbs, it only seems to be able to move the one leg. Uh, no, uh, really, I swear this thing just stomps its one foot throughout the entire fight. Legit, what was the friggin' point? Why'd they give the robot four limbs? Were the other ones just for decoration or something? You're wasting your time. With the robot vanquished, we simply have to use a turret and guide the missiles to destroy his ship. Kind of reminiscent of the Visi Bomb in Ratchet and Clank. And yeah, this boss is just that easy, despite all the build-up. The game misleadingly conveys the impression that it maintains a captivating plot with a unique villain. But you only ever face him once, and once it's over, you never hear from him again. I'll never forget you, whoever you were! It does kind of feel as though the game's story flounders here. I mean, it's still somewhat satisfying as we already have 621 as a villain, but I honestly expected Nibbles to make a return and perhaps even join forces with 621 to bring Stitch and Jumba down. As a rival evil scientist, you'd expect him to come face to face with Jumba at least once, right? Well, Oh, nope. As it is, it just feels like a plot point that goes absolutely nowhere. There is literally no point in this character. <laughs> anyway, with Nibbles exterminated, 621 makes off with a jetpack. Yeah! And it was in this next world that I had major issues with the camera. <sighs> the game better. It was definitely better than the last one. Definitely better. As you've probably noticed, Stitch's controls are very sensitive. It's especially hard to gauge how far he'll jump. <laughs> Pushing the left analog stick makes Stitch dart forwards, and he moves very swiftly. <laughs> Woohoo, Nelly! Slow down, bud! But when it comes to having him turn around on a small platform such as these, it feels as though pushing the analog stick in a certain direction should make him instantly turn to face that direction. Like with Buzz in Toy Story 2, when you just tap the button, he'll instantly turn around. 
but in this game, it doesn't work that way. Quite the contrary, in fact. Getting Stitch to do a 180 on these small platforms without falling off is a nightmare. Usually I'd resort to rotating the camera to turn the character at times like these, but even the camera can't help you here, as it automatically swings behind Stitch by default. Really? Who designed this camera? You know what, guys? Bottoms up. A jetpack! Now 626 can fly around the world! Eventually, we retrieve the jetpack, with which Stitch has to fly through rings before they disappear. <laughs> yep, it's that old cliche. How many times have we seen this before? And no, really, how many? Okay, I think we get the point. Keep trying to swim through all the rings! And this can be unreasonably difficult. The rings disappear so quickly, and it sometimes feels unfair as the camera keeps you from seeing where the next one appears. No! <sighs> oh. Oh. oh my god! What? Why did I think this was a good idea? By the time you've seen where it is, it's too late, and you have to start the course all over again. Ugh. Frustrating just doesn't cover it. You have to fly very fast, and I personally found it impossible to retrieve all the DNA along the trail. You simply don't have the time to look around and locate them. You have enough DNA to continue if you wish. A little further along, Experiment 621 then uses the DNA on himself and transforms into a larger, uglier version of himself. Now we this. Once again, this fight is extremely underwhelming. <laughs> Honestly, the boss fights seem to be the easiest aspect of the game, and this one in particular feels so anticlimactic considering the game has been building up to this moment. Once you've destroyed the machine, you simply have to lure the charging 621 into the electric currents. I could compare this to so many other level bosses. It's the standard lure the big thing into the conveniently placed hazards cliche. Toro! Toro! That's what I call bull. Once we've defeated 621, Captain Gantu appears and places Jumba under arrest. Jumba, I've finally caught up with you. It's then our job to use all the abilities we've learned to navigate the ship and rescue Jumba. Being as it is the game's final act, an increase in difficulty, and therefore death, is to be expected. Oh, 626, you think Lucky Stars Jumbo is such good doctor? Uh, hey, wait, aren't you incarcerated? How are you reviving me? This makes no sense! Eventually, we come across the most infuriating part involving the jetpack. And this is ridiculous. It took so many attempts. The rings do appear along a set path as usual, but it's impossible to see the pattern until it's too late. The rings often appear off screen, and by the time you've discovered which way to go, it's too late and you need to start over. No! I must say, with all the deaths I've suffered in this game, Stitch has really upped his game with his death noises. No! Gone are the feeble shrieks of the PS1 game. No. In fact, in this game, he never shuts the hell up. No! <laughs> you know what, hun? I think I preferred you before. Anybody want to stitch his lips together? Before too long, we encounter the final boss. None other than the gargantuan Captain Gantu. Come out here and make me like a... Uh, whatever. Interestingly, Gantu here is voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, as he was in the movie. Why is this interesting, you ask? Well, this means that he voiced the villain for two 2002 games set in space, the other villain being Chairman Drek from the far superior Ratchet & Clank. Form a line behind me and kiss my... We're still on? Well, turn it off, you idiot! How I wish I was playing this instead. Why do I torture myself with these terrible games? I also find it somewhat amusing that this guy clearly has the ability to convey a powerful, intimidating voice. And yet, his name is Kevin. I don't know why this amuses me. I mean, obviously I'm not saying evil Kevins don't exist, but it's such an innocuous name. I imagine Gantu would seem a hell of a lot less threatening if his name was Kevin. Oh my god! It's... Kevin. Sadly, in spite of his ominous presence, Gantu is just as disappointing a level boss as all the others. In fact, despite his sheer size, he's arguably the simplest to beat. And do you know, strangely, I often find that to be the case. I'm not sure if it's just me, but whenever faced with the threat of an enemy the size of a small country, I find that they're most often a colossal disappointment. <laughs> See what I did there? 
Once you've freed Jumba, he's able to intermittently freeze Gantu. While he's frozen, it's your job to throw these missiles at him. Once again, three strikes and he's out. With Gantu defeated, Stitch and Jumba make their escape. I will catch you, you little trug! And that's just about it, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, and that fat hamster thing makes a cameo. You know, in case you forgot he existed. Yeah, remember him? <laughs> no, me neither. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so I think some credit has to be given for at least making a game that's a little more interesting than the Crash Bandicoot ripoff that was the PS1 game. That said, I did feel as though that game had some more variety in the visual sense. Recalling this game in retrospect was kind of difficult, as a lot of it seemed to blend together. There are some memorable locations, but all of the levels follow the same basic formula, which wouldn't be so bad if the controls weren't so janky, and there weren't so many issues with the, um, ugh, the camera. I tell you what, I'm going to have one hell of a hangover after this. <laughs> Let me do that line again. I think the concept behind the game is more intriguing than the game itself. To put it bluntly, the execution is not the best. At times it's far too frustrating to be enjoyable, but I like that they composed an entirely original story here, even if the story itself is pretty thin. Overall, it's an adequate movie tie-in. It's far from the worst Disney game, you only have to look at my channel to come to that conclusion, but I certainly wouldn't say it's out of this world. <laughs> Hey everyone! A massive thank you for 3,000 subs. I look like an alcoholic in this video, I'm well aware, but trust me, I, I haven't, uh, I'm not that much. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a while, so as always, thank you for being really patient. Uh, I haven't been very well for the last month, for those who don't know. It's been a pretty chaotic year, but hopefully it won't be gone too long. So, hope you enjoyed as always, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now. You idiot! We love the 